stranger to television, and I'll tell you one thing, he's no stranger to the devil. He, has, he is known in hell. How do you like that for an introduction, Dr. Walter Martin? <laughs> Delighted to have you here tonight. <laughs> well, now before you comment on my terrible introduction, it's nice to be known in hell. The devil's got you picked out for special services. But Dr. Walter Martin is the founder and director of Christian Research Institute Center in El Toro, right near the Marine base down there. He needs them to guard him. The center has volumes on contemporary trends in secular, cultic, occultic beliefs and how it relates to Christianity. Dr. Martin has authored many articles and over 12 books. His latest book is entitled The New Cults. Oh heavens. He's in great demand as a teacher in the USA, Europe, and Asia. They don't want you down there. No. <laughs> that nobody's invited you to come and speak down there. I've been invited to go there by a number of persons, however. You've been told to go there by <laughs> yes, quite a number of persons. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Martin also has a radio program aired locally here on KYMS called The Bible Answer Man. Well, we've already clapped and we've already said hello, and it's good to have you here. What's on your mind? Well, I was fascinated with this tour that you're going to take to... Uh, For you a special uh, To place. Israel, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because the way you were going there, I thought the next thing was going to be going to walk on water when you got to the Red Sea. <laughs> <clears throat> no. Thanks a lot. I appreciate that. You're getting even, aren't you? Let's try. Listen, Paul Crouch and I were over there some time ago, 250 of us, and uh, I don't... He didn't. No, I don't think or, he's ever or, forgiven or, me for this. We had these boats out <laughs> on the Sea of Galilee, and I was teaching. Charlene was singing, and then I said, now, ladies and gentlemen, I feel that the one who should lead us back should be the president of Trendcasting Network, Paul Walk. <laughs> anyway, well, um, Paul's got a good sense of humor. That's why we're both here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can see. Well I can see Very this is well going to be a heavy hour right now. <laughs> If you didn't have a sense of humor, you are absolutely right. Neither one of us would be here. <laughs> now, you that, are... I hope you meant just for the two of you, right? Well, we didn't bring you into that at all. Well, we could give consideration to that. He knows her. Think about it. Yes, we will. <laughs> well, you're Mr. Controversy. You know, you, you stir up the devil, don't you? Well, and you, um, I, I stir up a lot of people. That's perfectly true. But I think that part of the problem of the church historically has been that if you don't have any movers and shakers and nobody dissenting and nobody pointing things out, then you don't have any teaching ministry in the church because you teach by contrast. And um, the Christian church, his days of the church father till today, has been controversial. Uh, there's nothing wrong with controversy for the sake of truth. It's controversy just for the sake of controversy that's a sin. Yes. And controversy that speaks the truth in love <clears throat> is a biblical command. And um, at Christian Research Institute, which uh, uh, I direct, uh, we specialize in dealing with the cults, the occult, non-Christian religions, and apologetics, which is the defense of Christianity. Now, the gentleman who was on before me uh, was talking about Berkeley. And uh, you were asking him questions about what the attitude of the professors was, and so forth. And uh, it's obvious that they're secularists. I know I've taught in university and college <coughs> and seminary for many years. And uh, they obviously are antagonistic to theism and to Christianity. Now, what would it be like if the church never ever gave anybody any answer? Supposing all you did was go on television and smile at the camera and say, Jesus loves you. And the person out there says, yeah, but what am I going to do with this contradiction between this passage and that passage? Jesus loves you. <laughs> what am I going to do about... I mean, this passage obviously teaches that Jesus is, is uh, the archangel Michael. Uh, Jehovah's Witness says that. Say, well, Jesus loves you. We're going to pray for you. You know what you're going to do? <clears throat> you're going to turn off everybody because people want answers to their questions. I do the Bible Answer Man program, 75 radio markets, uh, about 11 hours a week, live. All across the country, in our major radio markets, we're getting a marvelous controlled survey without asking for it. And you know as a former pastor what this means. People are asking <coughs> the same questions from Jacksonville, Florida, to Raleigh, North Carolina, to New York City, to um, Massachusetts, New England, across the Midwest, northwestern states, all the way across the country. Everybody 
is you're asking the same questions. Now, when you get a closed experiment like that, where everybody is asking the same questions, then you know that the church is not answering them. Because if they were getting answers to those questions, they wouldn't be calling in my program or Bob Larson's or other shows that specialize in questions and answers and saying anything. <clears throat> They'd be getting all the information at home, but they're not getting it at home. Do you think it's because a lot of them don't know the answers to that and that's why they, they go with the thing, uh, Jesus <clears throat> loves you? Or I, think, I think it's worse than that, Charlene. I think that we've entered into an era which leading to the great apostasy and the rise of the Antichrist, whether you're pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, or post-tribulation, you're going to get there one way or the other. Sure. Uh, it's all pure tribulation when you get down to it. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, the truth of the matter is, leading up to this, the scripture <clears throat> says, and we don't pay attention to it, that there will be a lulling of the mind of the church, that the church will accept evil as truth, that the church will accept false prophets rather than true prophets, that when we speak against error, as Paul was doing in his day, who was coming after him? The Corinthians, the Galatians, everybody wanted a scalp. John speaks against the Antichrist. Who's the bad guy? John. Who's the bad guy? Paul. But these are the apostles. Now, in the entire history of the church, I think we discussed part of this one time before, mm -hmm. God raises up apostles, in the beginning, prophets, and then the church fathers, then after them, the reformers, and so forth. What was the purpose? It was to bring the church back to the path she deviated from, theologically. Now, we have deviated in a massive way today. When you say we, are you talking about the evangelical born the evangelical again world? evangelical hyphen charismatic churches. <clears throat> we're not talking about the liberals, we're talking about the nope. conservatives. Well, we don't even discuss the liberals because, no, because they're they, they have nothing anyhow. Right. So what, what, right. Are, what are you wasting your time for? I came from liberalism. Uh -huh. I was educated in Roman Catholic schools and I was raised in the Episcopal Church. I was designed to be an Episcopal priest by my uh, dean of our cathedral. I would have been, except that he spent some time explaining to me that the Bible couldn't be relied upon always. And I knew better, even though I was a youngster, I knew better than that. So I turned away from that. I found out what liberalism was. I was educated in a liberal background, liberal theology. Now, I know the liberals are bankrupt. Mm -hmm. I know the cults are bankrupt. Mm -hmm. I know the world religions are bankrupt. Otherwise, God wouldn't have sent Jesus Christ into the world to save us. Right. He would have gotten there by Buddha, Moharoaster, Confucius, or your Uncle Harry. <laughs> but, God, but God loved the world and sent his son into the world to save it. Now, what's happening, this is true, what's happening is a marked reticence on the part of the professing church <clears throat> to call the proverbial spade a spade. We see Christian leaders on television, and they're asked direct questions on national television. I mean, right out in the open, specifically. Do you believe this? And won't answer them. You have such leaders as Norman Vincent Peale, big power of positive thinking image. Mm -hmm. And Peale goes on the Donahue show. That's coast to coast. That's the biggest talk show you've got. Mm -hmm. And they got to discussing Christianity. And Donahue asked him point blank, is the only way to get to heaven Jesus? No, good, no. I mean, after all, if you're sincere, you're, what's going on here? This is the former pastor of Marble Collegiate Church. I mean, this is a leader in the uh, Protestant, American Protestantism. Mm -hmm. And they get in the middle of the dialogue uh, on the subject of uh, what people believe, and they're criticizing Dr. Peel for some of his views, some of the people. And Donnie, you saw the hell with them. This is, this is the, the people that are criticizing false doctrine. Mm -hmm. To hell with them. Mm -hmm. Peel says, right, to hell with them. Well, I mean, doesn't anybody ever anymore get excited in the presence of evil? Mm. That's the question I'm asking. I mean, doesn't it rile you? Oh, you can get riled about abortion because, I mean, after all, there's a lot of people with you. You can get riled about um, AIDS and homosexuality, even though we're suppressing that as consistently as we can mm -hmm. to protect the gays. Um, uh, we can get excited about that because it's going to kill us. Right. That's why they're getting excited about that. Otherwise, you wouldn't hear anything about it. Blood transfusions. Right, but, right, but what else? Nobody wants to come out and say what's wrong for fear that they're going to be criticized, for fear that they'll lose their constituency. 
See? Now, the truth is that if you preach the gospel like it is, and you defend the gospel the way you're supposed to, God will take care of your finances and your constituency. Amen. He promises to. Sure. See? You, you do not... Uh, That's good. You, you, you do not get up and tell people what they want to hear to get their pocketbook. Are you suggesting that's going on today? I know it's going on. I mean, I can turn on my television set and I can see it. I mean, there's one major TV network, not this one, Christian TV network, where the host has got to have his, his uh, tear ducts connected to his kidneys because nobody could cry that much. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> how, could you, how could you possibly miss? It's every other minute. Money, money, money. Well, there's nothing wrong with asking for money for the Lord's work. Mm -hmm. But when that is predominant in your approach, uh, I it is to, a turn off. Sure it is. When I went to, uh, yeah. when I went to a big TV network not long ago, I won't discuss which one for the sake of public relations, uh, I went there and um, uh, they told me that I should speak as the Spirit leads me. Well, that's fair, isn't it? The Spirit leads you, you should speak that way, right? Okay. So as I got up to get on the stage, they handed me a slip of paper like this. <clears throat> it said, try and be positive in everything you say. <laughs> I want you to tell me how it's positive to tell somebody they're going to hell. Tell me. <laughs> how positive can you get? You're going to hell. <laughs> You're going to hell. That's positive, huh? <laughs> of course not. You're going to have to say, hey, I love praying for you, but you know, if you, if you follow this path, you're lost. But <clears throat> don't want to do that. So be positive in everything you say. Do not mention Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, or Christian science. Now here is an internationally recognized cult expert. They said, they introduced me that way. Bring me on the program, fly me 3,000 miles, sit me down, and before I go on, they hand me a slip of paper that says, be careful what you say about your expertise. Huh? Heavy. No, he it's not only heavy, it is what nobody wants to face. It's censorship. Sure. And that's why Christian networks are going to come up for real legal action in the next five years because there are people out there filming these programs. I know this. Monitoring Christian networks and saying this is not representing the community. This is a money-making fundraising deal and we challenge that.